Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. With summer not far away, you may be making plans for a family trip. This week's blog post is all about how to do that in Evernote. So if you're watching this on YouTube, I have the link to the blog post in the show notes. In this video, I'll demonstrate the concepts from that blog post. So let's suppose that we're planning a trip to the Grand Canyon. I'll share my screen and we'll get going. Here I am in Evernote. What you see right now is what's called my inbox. This is the place where all new things go. Right now there's nothing in it because I clean it out every day. As we start planning for this trip, the first thing that I'm gonna do is create a new notebook for this trip, much like you would do in the pencil and paper world, where all of the paperwork associated with that particular trip would go. So to create a new notebook, I'm gonna go over here on the left-hand side and click on Notebooks. You see a list of all of the ones that I have, and then what you're gonna be looking for is a little button that says New Notebook. Let's click it, and now I can name my new notebook. Let's call this Grand Canyon Trip 2020. Okay. And now if I scroll down in the list of my notebooks on the left-hand side, here it is in the G's Grand Canyon Trip 2020. Now, one little trick that I use that it helps me a great deal is to create what are called stacks. And I have a, a stack of current projects. A stack is like a group of notebooks. So if I scroll up, you can see some of the things that I'm working on now in my current projects stack. So what I want to do is add that Grand Canyon trip in this list. So all I have to do is go down here to Grand Canyon and just drag it up and drag it right on top of where it says current projects and bam, there it lands in alphabetical order. I can click it and you see that I don't have any notes right now in my Grand Canyon trip notebook, but that's about to change. So let's say as I'm planning the trip, I go out to uh, the internet and I find a good article on places to eat around the Grand Canyon. Here we are, a great article from TripAdvisor on all kinds of good places that I might want to eat. Now, in the pencil and paper world, if this was a magazine, I'd take a pair of scissors and clip this page out, hole punch it, and put it in my three ring binder, my notebook for that trip. Here's what we're going to do in Evernote. Evernote has a wonderful device called the Web Clipper. It's a free extension. You can get it by just Googling Evernote Web Clipper for Windows or Evernote Web Clipper for Mac. Download it and it appears as a little elephant head. And if you can see mine right up here, the upper right corner, a little picture of an elephant head. Watch what happens when I click on that. Here I've got my web page up. I click the Evernote Web Clipper and it's just as if I took a pair of scissors. Here's the article, and if I just click Save Clip, it does a little piece of magic, and then I'm gonna show you in just a second what that looks like over in Evernote. So let's look at a second example. Here's a web page I'm on of some things to do while we're there at the Grand Canyon. So here's the article. Let me go over to the web clipper. And before I click save, I'm going to show you that I've got several options. It's highlighted article. If I say save the clip, it's going to get everything just as it appears in the green. If I had said full page, it would also give me all of the ads up and down the sides. Now, if you want a sort of a stripped down version, I like simplified article a whole lot. There what you see, you have the text, you have the pictures. So several different things that you can do. For, uh, for right now, I'm gonna say, let's do the simplified article on this one. We'll say, save the clip. And that quickly, it's done. Let's go over to Evernote and see what it's gonna look like there. Here I am in Evernote, and I'm looking at what's called my inbox. This is where everything I add to Evernote goes. Here was the first one that we clipped. Here's the entire article. Let's see, this was our simplified version. Here was the restaurants, 
And what you can see is it looks really exactly like it did on the web page. And anything that was a link in that web page is also a link here. If I click, you're automatically directed toward that particular website. One nice thing is that I can annotate these articles. I can actually click into this article and type some things. Here is more info I want to add. Uh, I can highlight things. I can change the font size on anything. I could make a paragraph bold. Lots of things that you can do uh, with that once it is in Evernote. Here's the other one. You can see that it's in the inbox from this drop down list. I could scroll down to Grand Canyon 2020, or if I just start typing the name of the notebook I'm looking for, a couple of letters, and it brings it right up for me. I click, it's out of the inbox, and now if I go down to that Grand Canyon notebook that's in the current project stack, there are my two notes. It indicates that uh, these are about to sync because I haven't made a change. I've moved them from one notebook to the other. So we've already started to create our notebook. We've got some notes in that notebook. Now, along the way, we're going to have some others. Think about what's going to happen when you make that hotel reservation and that airplane reservation and that rental car reservation. You're going to get those emails, those confirmations. Wouldn't it be good to be able to take those and put them over into that Evernote notebook? Let me show you how that's going to work. Here are several emails that I have. Let's look at the first one. This is sort of fake information, but it's information on a rental car that I may have reserved for this trip. I'd like to put this over in that Evernote notebook. So if I have an Evernote premium account, I can forward this into Evernote. Evernote gives me a special email address. Anything sent to that address automatically goes into Evernote. So let's hit forward. And I'm going to enter that special Evernote address. Now I'm going to pause right now so that you don't see exactly what that address is, because if you saw that address, you'd be able to send things into my Evernote account. So I'm going to unshare the screen for just a moment. We've got two more here. Here's information on my hotel. Now let's say that you don't have an Evernote premium account. There's another way that I can get this over into that Evernote notebook. Over on the right hand side, you see some little icons in Gmail to my Google Calendar, for example. And here you see this little familiar Evernote head. This is free. Uh, it's, a little, um, it's a little Chrome extension. And the way I can get it is, you also see a little plus sign a little further down. If I click, that opens up any of the uh, add-ons. And I, if I just search for Evernote for Gmail, there it is. It says uninstall because I've already installed it. Yours is going to say install, one click, and you'll have it. And yours will show up as this little elephant head. So watch what happens. If I click it, little sidebar opens where I can choose a notebook to send it to. I like to just send everything first to the inbox and then drag it uh, later. I can add tags. I can add any little comments that I want to. Uh, this is info about the hotel, et cetera, et cetera. But really, the only thing I have to do is save. And I can X out of that and archive that email, knowing that it's all safe and sound over in Evernote. And then here we have uh, information about our flight. Let me just do the same thing real quickly, just to show you how quick this is. And this is what you can do with a free Evernote account. Click the elephant head, click save, and it's done. And then let's see, here's one more. For real email, as you can see, the others were sort of fake emails that I created just to show you an example. But let's say this is something that I got for real. Hey, maybe we want to stay at Best Western uh, during our Grand Canyon. So I can just go back over here and say, yeah, let's uh, click here. Let's say save. And it's done. Now, let's go back over to Evernote and see how all this looks.
here we are in the Evernote inbox. Remember there were four emails and here we see four notes. Here's the last one that we just did. Here's the one on the flight information. All it was was just text. Here was the one on the hotel. Here's the one on the rental car information. And again, it was all just text that, uh, that I had forwarded over. So now to get those into the, uh, the notebook, I can click one at a time. I can drag them over into that Grand Canyon notebook. I could click the first one, hold the shift key, click the last one. It selects all of them. And then I could say, let's move those, move note, and select the notebook that I want. They're out of the inbox. Let's go to the Grand Canyon notebook. And there are all the notes that I saved. The little blue arrows indicating that, uh, that I had changed something about it. I'd moved it to a no, new notebook. And so when it syncs to the cloud, those little things will go away. Now let's look at some other things that we can do with this. Every Evernote note has its own link. Let's say, for example, that I wanted to call the airline about the flight that I'd made and ask them a question. Well, that's a to-do, and I want to put that in my to-do list, which is remember the milk. So watch what I do here. Let me click on the flight information. I'm going to right-click on that, and I see something that says copy internal link. I'll click that. Now I'm going to go over to remember the milk and create a task reminding me to call the airline. Watch how that works. So here we are in remember the milk. I'm going to create a new task and say call airline about Grand Canyon flight. Okay, and there's that task. Now, when I call them, I'd like to have that information from Evernote in front of me. And here's how I can make that happen. I'll just click on the task, and then over here where it says URL, or in the notes section, I can just paste what I had copied. I could do it there. I could also do it here. And that would even give me a date and time stamp. So now when I have the airline on the phone, I can just click this link. And there we are on that note. So that's one of the great things about Evernote is that every, every note has its own link. And you can take that link and put it in a task. Let's look at what else we could do. The ability to share a notebook is another great thing about Evernote. Let's say, for example, you might need to share all of this information with a spouse or an older child. It's as simple as this. If I right click on that notebook, I can simply say share notebook and add names and email addresses of other people. And I can give them the ability to edit, to view, or edit and invite other people to the notebook. So if they have Evernote, uh, it'll show up in their Evernote account as well. They can make changes, they can make additions if you've given them the ability to do that. Another nice thing about Evernote is Evernote is really like almost its own web page. I showed you how I could copy the internal link for myself, but let's say uh, this little note about uh, great things to do if I wanted just anybody to be able to view that particular note. Let's say Facebook friends, uh, people that don't have Evernote. Instead of going to copy internal link, if I say share, copy shareable link, what that does is gives me something that anybody would be able to use. I'm just gonna open up a new tab. I'm gonna just paste that link and even someone who doesn't have Evernote, it's going to open that for them. If they do have Evernote, one click, 
and they can pull it into their own Evernote account. And any changes that you make to the original note will show up. They'll be able to make uh, those changes will be made automatically for them over here. I have one final concept for you, and it's what's called offline notebooks. Now, let's say we're actually on the trip now. We not only have these few notes, but we have all kinds of notes in that Grand Canyon notebook, and we'd like to be able to access them on the road from anywhere. Now, if you've got internet access, you could get to it from your mobile devices, from your laptop computer, even from any computer in a hotel business center that has internet access. You can just log into your Evernote account. But what if you do not have internet access? What if you don't have a signal somewhere? Well, with offline notebooks, you'll actually have the data on your mobile device instead of it pulling from the cloud. And it works like this. On your mobile device, just simply navigate to that particular notebook. You'll see your, all of your notes that you had saved, all your notes that you created. And at the top is just a little menu that says, for me, not available offline, but if I slide the slider the other way, it'll say that it's available online. It copies all of the information from that notebook physically onto your mobile device uh, so that you'd be able to have that even if you did not have internet access. So that's how to plan a trip using Evernote. Hey, are you on my email list? That's the best way to stay up on new content that I produce on the blog, the podcast, and the YouTube channel. When I'm a guest on a podcast or speaking in an event near you, you'll know about it. And you'll also get two free gifts. One will show you my method for keeping your desk clean, and the other shows you how to keep everything you have to do in one place. You'll get up every day knowing what's most important for the day. Thanks for stopping by. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and make it look easy.